Launching a new product category is never easy. Just ask Ian Brand, Innovation Lead at General Motors. Ian's group evaluates new business opportunities for GM, and they've successfully helped launch three new businesses in the last four years. And within that framework, Ian sometimes had trouble finding the right people to interview for customer discovery. Ian was looking for a solution to this problem, and when he found game thinking, he knew he'd found the answer. Here are three game-changing upgrades that Ian brought to his innovation work at GM. What I have really come to rely upon, having tried and tested all these different techniques, there's some like really great upgrades I think that you find in this methodology. I found these three pieces that I'm gonna share with you today. The first one is super fans, and I love this. You want to start seeking out the people who desperately want this thing you're working on to exist and to get feedback and insights from those people rather than a mass market. When we talk to customers, we're trying to test to see, is this actually a problem? Maybe we would talk to people in the customer segment that we're going after, but they wouldn't bring this up. They wouldn't say this is a big unmet need. And so we would check it off as, okay, not a problem. This is a bad idea. Let's move to the next one. But something didn't quite seem right. It seemed like maybe if we didn't talk to enough people or we weren't talking to the right people. And I felt like we were getting false negatives. Like we didn't really validate that it was a bad idea. And so when I found the super fan concept in game thinking, it was perfect. This is a systematic process for finding those early adopters. There's a group of people that will desperately want your product to be there for them, solve their problems, they want it to exist. And these will be your super fans. And what you're doing is you are going out into the market and you are screening the market for those people. There's like three major steps in the super fan funnel. First step is hypothesizing about who are those super fans. And so there's four key traits. One, they have the problem. Two, they know they have the problem. Three, they're trying to solve that problem. And then four, they're dissatisfied with the current options. You then start hypothesizing about your channels where you can go find these people and you develop this recruiting message. So the screener has two big pieces, multiple choice questions and open-ended. And this is where you can start screening for those super fans. You'll get those responses and you'll organize them into green, yellow, red buckets. And so you start to green light people to go out and then perform the research with. It's a cheat code. Rather than talking to everyone in the world, you're actually getting right on point, quick feedback right from the exact people you're looking for. And you're like skipping ahead and not wasting time with people like this is not for them. They're not the right segment of the population. The second thing that you get from this is some data on what are the pains, what are the needs. That problem is sitting in a hierarchy of problems that they have trying to accomplish that core functional problem. And then also look at the existing habits people have. As human beings, we're creatures of habit and we have behaviors and those habits are chained to something that have to do with solving these problems or the problems that they have. So it's better feedback, it's faster feedback, it's more actionable using this process. The second big tip is build a sticky habit re-engagement loop. This is an upgrade to the customer journey. Think about what it means for that user to have that problem and what it would mean to them to have mastered solving that problem. Not just solve it, but be a master at solving that problem. Think about what that looks like and then design a system that helps get them there. Your product is like this engine that's helping them become a master at solving that problem. So I thought that is like an awesome lens to think about. The second big takeaway is looking at the habits people have and leveraging that. There's a couple of ways that you can use habits. One of them is habit stacking. Habit stacking is the idea that we naturally today have existing habits that are ingrained with us. Tap into those habits, recognize them, and then start to insert many new habits and that compound over time into a large change in habits. When you have the habit of brushing your teeth, that might also be like the good timing to use floss. That's usually when people, they don't go out of their way to floss, but when they're brushing your teeth, they're triggered to do it because that's the existing habit. 
or walking the dog, that might be your trigger to listen to podcasts. So there's an existing activity that you have to do that you you automatically do that you launch this new activity or this new technology or product with that existing one. Eight years, 10 years ago, gamification of your app, that was like the big thing. And so you would have these bells and whistles and badges that were that didn't really hit the mark. And the reason why they didn't hit the mark is because they were not tied back to skill building feedback or progressive investment. They were just bells and whistles. And so what game thinking says is look for those cues and triggers and time your product experience with those and get into the core engaging activity. So this is like the main activity that is your product. The third big takeaway is use skill building feedback and then progressive investment towards that mastery path. This is actually useful information that again, triggers that core fundamental need we have to learn and get better at things that we care about. When we changed our lens towards not just building a solution to solve a problem, but thinking through like, what does this look like when they have mastered the problem? What does it look like, not just like the first week of doing it or their daily habit, but what does it look like a year from now to actually be a master at doing this? We found like brand new problems or brand new insights and ideas that became new projects that we were not even thinking about beforehand. The third and last piece that blew me away is testing your ideas in rough form with super fans, but doing it with storyboard concept scenarios. I was familiar with doing storyboards. We were using it more as a design resource for our product teams or to get stakeholder buy-in on new ideas. And so we would tell a story and we would sketch it out into a storyboard and say, this is how it will work. I had never thought of actually taking those storyboards and use that to test with customers. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. When people use products, they're using it inserted into your lives. They're going to weigh like, is this worthy of my time that I already have planned for? So the idea is test how this product changes their life. We use those job stories, those habit stories, and we start to align them along that mastery path. And we design it, and those are the key beats that you'll use. And then what you'll do is those key beats, you'll start breaking down into cells of a storyboard. The idea is you want there to be enough visuals where they understand and they can imagine themselves in the scenario, but not enough where the graphics are beautiful and they're more thinking about the colors being used rather than that, the actual experience. Testing the areas around the use of the product and testing the later scenarios, what they're doing in a year and how they're using it. We got feedback that was unexpected. We got feedback from users that that was like the most important part for them. And that was something like we had no insight or we're not even thinking about. And that data and those insights that came from that totally helped pivot our products and shape our products in a better way by testing those like the total customer journey and the total scenario. Game thinking is now an integral part of EN's innovation toolkit at General Motors. If you'd like to use game thinking to validate your product ideas, go to gamethinking.io slash GTS and download your free cheat sheet. The link is in the description. Let's get smarter together. I'll see you in the next video.